Hey, Easter here. Today I just want to show you the Sharj or Shargeek uh, disc, which is the SSD enclosure that they brought out maybe six months ago. Um, I want to go through this compared to some of the other units out there like the Samsung T7, the SanDisk, and then also an Aorus one, which is like a SSD enclosure. Uh, when I first looked at this, I think it was on um, one of those Kickstarter sort of programs, it was really hard to compare it to anything else because it actually hadn't really got it out there in the wild. So I thought, now that it is in the market, maybe you want to buy it. And this video, hopefully, will just give you those answers that the website doesn't usually do very well at. Now, I took some feedback on from the last video, so I'm going to give you some more detail in this video regarding the weight, the size, the performance that it can do speed-wise, uh, the temperatures as well, and then the cons. But if you don't want to watch the video, the only con is really just the little fan that makes some noise. And I guess that's there for thermal performance. Other than that, the unit's amazing and size-wise beats all the other ones. I think the only other unit on the market that I could probably say it's close to this is the Crucial one, which is um, a little square that I've seen a lot of people use on the back of their iPhone 15 Pro Maxes and stuff. Other than that, we'll get into the video. And if you've got any questions, of course, just ask in the comments. Cool. In the box, I was pretty impressed. It has everything you really need. It's got an extra heat pad that you can stick on if you need that for a later date. And I'm using one of the optional uh, SSDs that they offer. Now in terms of width, length and thickness, uh, the width is four centimeters, length is 5.5 centimeters, and the thickness is uh, 1.5 centimeters. This is including the case. So obviously without it, it's a little bit smaller, and that is a width of 2.6 centimeters, length of 4.2 centimeters, and a thickness of 1.2 centimeters. The extendable cable that comes with it is 20 centimeters, and this can be attached to this little case and put on the outside of the rubber dies case of the SSD. And this is handy because that way you don't have to try and find it when it's in your bag or in your drawer. You don't need this, you can actually just use the SSD by itself. But if you are going to use it without this cable, you need to take it outside of this rubber dies case to do so. Discussing the weight of these things, 59.9 grams is what my scale said. The cable coming in at 10 grams. And then the whole unit itself, I think, came in at 49.9 nine grams but I actually said 49.3 on my scale so i'm not sure what's going on there but obviously the scale is a little bit cooked the raw unit well just the actual ssd without the case that comes in at like 24.9 grams which is pretty crazy light for the whole thing and pretty handy if you were using this with like a portable gaming unit if we compare these weights to say like the rog that one there is 121.9 grams then you've got the extreme from sandisk and that's 85.9 grams and then also you have the samsung t7 which is super common at 58.5 grams okay on to thermals now this was doing a 10 gig file transfer a couple of times through to get it warm and ambient temperature was 24 degrees so 25.6 is what the disc from charge got and then sandisk uh, maxed out at 30.2 degrees celsius and then we have the samsung at 28.3 i think uh, it's quite hard to see sorry the screen was hard to record on my like pretty cheap thermal camera but we've got the idea i guess and then the rog which is using a samsung ssd inside of it is 29 degrees all very similar but i think that fan does actually help keep that disc a little bit cooler and now we move on to what that fan actually sounds like and probably the biggest con with the unit but this is an extreme case because obviously this mic is right up in the fan without a case on um, day-to-day -day usage you don't really hear it that much but it's just to be aware that this is probably the one thing Now this part of the video is really for the people that like to sort of have a full 360 view of the unit uh, without any flashy cuts or sort of chops and changes of uh, camera angles. So you can see the whole metal construction there, uh, the fan as well, which is the quite a small fan, which I guess makes that pitch of sound. They do say that the decibels aren't that bad, but I would say that it's just something to be aware of if you have the case covering the fan is not as loud. And a little rubber bung there is how you take out the SSD and insert it back in. And underneath that is where you'll see the thermal pad. Now there's this extra thermal pad that's included in the box, which is handy, but I don't really see why I would need that. But the only other thing I could tell you uh, before I stop talking is that there's 
a lock right button on the side which I thought was how you actually released this case but it's actually held in by magnets so you just have to slide that off easily enough and it will come out uh, and just make sure you don't flick that button before you try and format your drive. Alright, I'll talk to you soon. Now talking performance, we're transferring an 11.6 gig folder full of videos from my desktop to the drives and these are all done in real world time except for the T7 from Samsung which was sped up four times just because it was taking so damn long. On the right hand side which was done at a separate time as a disk speed test, they will just show you the read and write speeds of all four different um, drives just so you can get some comparison and some real world data for yourself if you're trying to compare. Now that really depends on the SSD which is included in the disk but they do say it can transfer up to 10 gigabits per second so I guess the limitation will be what you're transferring and then also the uh, SSD that's included or that you put into the actual unit. So in conclusion I highly recommend this little drive. I think it's an amazing little package and because it's my day to day I can really say that it actually does what it needs to do and does it well. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it getting corrupted or taking its time to sort of load files or offload files. So except for that fan I think this is an awesome little tool and at its price point not a bad choice. If you've watched this far I really appreciate it. If you've got any other questions or any other feedback that you want to give me please comment in the section below. See ya, bye.